Okay, so next topic is speed and distance measurement. Speed and distance measurement. So first, before we go further, uh, we'll see the history of speed and distance measurement. Okay, electromagnetic log, Doppler log and acoustic log. This is the top three which currently being used now, nowadays. Okay, of course, uh, not so many ship is using electromagnetic log but still out there is this uh, the latest one is Doppler and acoustic log but before that, long before that there were Dutchman log, log shape, common log, top log, imperial log and pitometer log okay so this is the history so introduction, accurate speed and distance measurement is required for to calculate the DR, dead reckoning, position and running fixes okay for example in the morning you took long by crown right so let's say the declination is zero so you you get exactly the longitude longitude so that's why they call it long micron huh? so zero eight zero zero hours and then in the noon time during mp okay let's say mp let's say yeah, 1200 okay you get the latitude right so the distance between these two is four hours so what you need is the speed so speed for 4 hours, let's say speed is uh, 12 uh, knots so meaning to say your distance cover is 48 miles so you can run this for 48 miles okay and then you will get the noon phase and then uh, speed and distance measurement also for information to other systems such, such as AIS, right? Uh, your this radar, ARPA. Okay, speed and distance are measured either over ground or through the water. Eh? So speed measuring devices are called logs and have been used for hundreds of years. Okay. Ground track and water track. So there is two type of tracking. Okay, like this one. See water track. Okay. Okay, the first one is Dutchman lock. Okay. So what happened? Dutchman lock is very easy. The easiest. Uh, okay, one person stay at half at one point. So there's what they they have already marking a point on the ship so one stay one person stay forward the person at the forward will hold a wooden lock okay wooden lock and the person at the aft will hold an hour glass okay so the person at the forward at the time they agree okay, okay. so the forward the forward person will throw out uh, throw the wooden lock of course because it would it has an ability to float okay and as the ship goes forward the ship goes forward and uh, what happened basically this um, wooden will pass the person at half so by the time this lock arrive at the person at half they will stop the time measurement so the distance between the, these two person are known so they know the distance and then they are taking the time time so they will know the speed okay what is the speed of the ship but of course because the time taken is using the hourglass so it's very difficult to control hourglass right it was inaccurate all right that's a dutchman lock yes next one is common lock the development of the lock ship except that the line was now knotted and the number of knot paid out in a minute measured hence the term knot which means speed of one vehicle number hour so when you see when you say the ship speed is 14 knots 12 knots the term knots come from this this device okay so what happened uh before they use wooden stick right wooden stick that's normal wooden stick now they have changed it into wooden plate okay uh quarter uh quarter circle wooden plate with attached to a rope attached to a rope same like when you're playing kite like this our kite okay it will stay upright okay 
Alright, so this is the purpose of uh, this three point, uh, three point uh, secure, secure three point because of this purpose. You want to make the wooden plate upright. Okay, and then this line is attached to full length of line which mark by knot. Okay, so they make a knot marking. At, a, at an equal distance okay so one knot two knot three knot and what happen when the ship moving they throw this thing out so because of the water resistant okay this wooden plate will stay upright when they start the time they will let go of the wooden wooden plate and then this one knot, two knot, three knot will go. Will go after 28 seconds. They will stop the count and they will see check how many knot are still on board. Okay, the closest one. So let's say the knot uh, is 10 knots. We need to say the speed is doing 10 knots. Huh? Okay, 10 nautical mile per hour. Okay. You've heard of going at the rate of knots? What's that all about? Well, a knot is a nautical mile. That's how ships measure their progress. And it's not the same as a land mile. Uh, a knot is about 1.15 land miles. It suits the sailors to work in distances that are a fraction of the distance around the earth. That's what a knot is. But why a knot? How does that come into it? Well, it all comes in because the way you measured your knots and the way you traveled in a ship was with this. It's a ship's log. And you can see it's actually a piece of wood, which is a section of a circle, weighted down the bottom with lead. It was either a strip like that or lead plugs. It's got three ropes going into it, one of them being on a removable peg. The idea was this, you chuck this overboard, and that, because of the lead weighting, sat upright in the water. It didn't sink, but it sat upright. And that stopped it being dragged through the water. So when you chucked it overboard, it stayed still, and the ship sailed away from it. And you could pay out all this line, and at intervals along the line, in fact, every 14.4 meters, you would mark it with a knot. And the first one had one knot, the second one had two knots, the third one had three, you get the idea. And the unit of time was peculiarly 28 seconds, which was measured with an hourglass. So you turn the hourglass over, threw the log out, and when the sand ran out of the hourglass, clamp on the rope and say, oh yes, that's so many knots. Well, let's see how it goes. Let's get the rope ready. I think we're ready to heave. Could you start the hourglass now? Okay, that's the end of 28 seconds. Well, let's see where we are. We're not on a knot, but just down here, not very far away, is this. What does it say? As you can see, it's got four knots on it. So we're going at almost four knots. Not very fast, but a nice leisurely pace. Now we've got to retrieve it. Let's test this peg. Give it a good jerk, and we should be able to reel it in fairly easily. Well, that takes a bit of time, and so I'm going to tie it off here and show you what replaced this primitive chip log because it wasn't terribly effective at least it wasn't terribly accurate okay now from wooden stick this wooden stick they change to a wooden plate but with line now they take out the wooden plate they change it with a rotator sometimes something like impeller all right so this impeller or this rotator when there is a water flow it will start to turn right it will turn and what happen? Because it attached to a rope, this rope will also turn, which will be connected to a uh, governor. So this governor will also turn. How many turn per minute will be registered here? Will be uh, sent to a bridge reading. If the ship is moving faster, the rotator will move faster. The governor will uh, move faster. The register will show more turn per minute uh, that one will be shown in the bridge uh, read, read out here Curiosity. this thing looks like a rocket or a bomb but it had nothing to do with fire in fact it traveled underwater 
and a hundred years ago it might have saved your life. What do you think it is? It is, or was, a highlight in its day. It was the frictionless propeller log, and it was used to tell a ship how far and fast it had gone. It worked like this. You had it tied onto a long rope, and you dropped it over and towed it behind the ship. Now that housing there can actually spin, but in fact the rope stayed steady, and it was this torpedo-like device that went spinning around. You can see that what looks like rocket fins are in fact slightly offset. That meant that the water playing on them made them twist. Well, as they twisted, a device inside made the counters go round. That was for units, tens and hundreds. So it kept a very accurate measure of the number of times that it twisted. Rather like the device you've got in the middle of the speedometer of your car, or perhaps the one you've got on your bicycle. Every time the wheel goes round, a spike on a spoke ticks the thing on one uh, extra click. Well, it was tremendous. For the first time, ships could really see how fast they'd gone and how far they'd travelled. And with that, they could calculate very accurately their place in the world. It was a great improvement on the logs that had gone before. And in a tick, we'll show you how they operate. Okay, now, they keep the impeller, they keep the rotator, and then they change it with the... Uh, something like this. Uh. Okay, Chenekif lock consists of small impeller which protrude before the ship hull consists of lock housing, portable road meter, combined speed distance meter, which has the together. So, so how this thing works? When the ship is moving, the impeller will start to turn right. So this impeller is attached to a magnet. So next to the magnet is the uh, wire coil. Okay, according to Faraday, if you turn the, uh, the when the magnetic field around the magnet is being cut by the coil, it will generate alternating current. So the alternating current is which being generated, how much is being generated will determine the speed of the ship. Okay, so principle of impeller, small rotor placed in a horizontal tube at the end of the vertical housing. Okay, horizontal tube at the end of the vertical housing, rotated by the flow of water passing the ship. Okay, at the end of the horizontal spindle is a magnet which produces an alternating current in a coil fitted to the road meter. The magnitude and the frequency of the current is proportional to the speed of the ship through the water. So as the ship is going faster, the faster the impeller will turn and more current will be generated, right? Okay, another one is pitometer lock, okay, pressure tube lock. So the sensor tube and static tube extend below the hull. The sensor tube is retractable, so you can pull it up. Place within the water tight sea chest arrangement, okay? So pitometer uh, pressure tube lock. So, <coughs> As you can see here, there is a static tube. One is static tube, one is dynamic tube. So when the ship is not moving, the pressure in static tube and the dynamic tube will be the same. So static tube means the pressure in the static tube will always be the same. Okay, so let's say the pressure here in one bar and the dynamic tube also one bar. Okay, so uh, meaning to say the Static tube and static pressure and dynamic pressure is the same, the same. So this will indicate the ship is not moving. Okay, All right. And then when the ship is start to move, okay, when the ship start to move, all the uh, the water will come inside the tube, the dynamic tube, and start to create a pressure. See, the pressure will start to build up. So the diaphragm will push the mechanical linkage, will, will, uh, which will tell how much pressure is being developed. So now what happened, the static tube will always be static, but the dynamic tube start to build up the pressure. Okay, how much difference between these two pressure will determine the ship speed. Understand? Okay, so the, when the ship is moving forward, the pressure build up in the sensor tube, while the pressure in the static tube does not alter. Okay. The sensor tube means the dynamic tube. Ah. Dynamic tube. So the pressure tube is the sum of both of the static and dynamic pressure. The pressure from the sensor and static tube go to a balance box. Yeah, balance box where the net pressure difference will be measured. Okay, they will check what is the difference between the static and the dynamic. So whenever the dynamic and static pressure same, so they know. So it will indicate that the ship is not moving. Okay, 
This is proportional to the speed of the ship and transmitted to electromagnetic servo system which convert it into speed. Okay, so uh, they will convert it, the pressure into the speed. So it can be monitored at several positions by readout and the information fed to our radar, ARPA and other navigation system. Okay, the disadvantage of pressure tube. Increase of pressure with increase in speed is non-linear. Okay, I will come back to this later. So danger of damage in shallow water. So because the ship, uh, because this thing is sticking out from the bottom of the ship, like something like that. So whenever you are passing a shallow water, maybe there's a rock here. Maybe you will hit the rock and damage the tube. Okay, cannot be measured to move a certain speed. Okay, because the opening is only one. Right? So that the water can come and uh, create pressure. If you put opening two, what happen? The water will come and go out. So there, will, there, there is no point unless you have a two tube. So one is facing forward. Okay, one is facing off, where the water will come in. Okay, and this one, the water will come in from stern, and for this one, the water will come from forward. Okay, then only you can measure the stern movement, but then you need another set of tubes, so that you can measure uh, a two ship movement also, to report to the starboard. So, you, instead of one, you're going to have multiple tubes, okay, so it's not very efficient, uh, the pitometer uh, lock. So cannot be used to measure external uh, speed. Liable to clogging with marine, falling, mud. Say, so when there is an opening, okay, mm -hmm. an opening okay. where water can come in. Not only water can come in, the fish also can come in. Okay. So what happen? The tube will choke, and then mud. All the mud can come and start to clog the tube. Okay, this is the uh, what it means by the increase of pressure with increase in speed is non-linear somewhere around 17 okay so this is five knots different okay five knot different but the pressure is actually one intermeter different only compared to see this one is only around two knots different but the pressure is actually one knot one intermeter same it's one intermeter this is also one intermeter but the pressure being built up this, is, this one is 5 knot, another one is 2 knots. Okay, so this is what it means by non-linear increase, pressure with speed. So as you go faster, so if the ship is going faster, right, the measurement of the speed will be uh, will be less less and less accurate. Uh, in order to accurately measure, you need a graph like this. Okay, generally it will be same. See, the distance here, and this turn here uh, it's a, uh, it is a same uh, then if the graph like this then okay but if because of the uh, the graph is non-linear then the as you go faster the speed measurement will be less accurate okay and then next is after pitometer lock is electromagnetic lock eml em lock cool. so for em lock still are currently being used so uh, because it able to measure both a head and a stern speed consists of flow sensor outside the hull master unit and speed of distance recorded okay it's almost the like same principle like the impeller lock except there is no impeller okay, but the current is general uh, current is always the continuously be supplied so that and uh, electromagnetic field can be generated so this is a continuous the electromagnetic field is continuously being generated okay continuously so what happen when the ship move the water will cut through the field when the water start to cut through the field uh, uh, it will generate another set of current okay it will generate set another set of current and this current will be used to determine the speed of the ship so meaning to say if the ship is moving at faster the more current will be generated okay principle of em lock so not generating magnetic field is placed within a loop okay if the loop is stationary magnetic field will not be intersected so if the if the field is, uh, if the 
ship is not moving so whatever current which generated will not be intersected lah because ship is not moving but once the ship is moving now the water will cut through the intersect the uh, feed and start to produce current so if the loop move then the voltage will be induced within the loop and will be proportional to the velocity of movement of the loop so as the ship is going uh, faster the more general current will be generated so the, the solenoid is placed in a streamlined flow sensor and produce a vertical magnetic field okay when energized sea water flowing past the sensor acts on the loop and any induced current is detected by two electrode button placed either side of the sensor a small induced current caused by water moving past the flow sensor is amplified at the master unit which process the feed to the speed indicator and the distance so accuracy is around half knots so we need to say if the ship is showing 15 knots so it can be uh, it can be up to 15.5 or 14.5 knots uh, within this uh, within this range or 2% of recorded distance Okay, this is the EM system configuration. So still in use, uh, some of with on on board some of the ship until today. Okay, now comes the Doppler lock. Okay, works on the principle of the frequency of the signal transmitted from stationary point after when received by a moving receiver. If an observer is moving towards the sound transmitter, the frequency received will be higher, and when moving from the source, it will be lower than transmitted frequency. Okay, like uh, if you watch uh, Formula 1, right, from far you will hear sound of the car. As it comes closer, the sound will be more louder, right? So the frequency will be start to be become higher, right? Higher and higher. So, so Doppler lock use this, this uh, principle which is Doppler shift, the shift of frequency. The shift. What happened there is a ship here For example It transmit a beam of sound vibration So this is a seabed right? Seabed It transmit a beam of sound So when it touch the ground It will start to bounce Right This happened in few milliseconds eh? within a few milliseconds so what happened when the ship uh, by the time it's already being transmitted the ship already moved maybe like this right so at this position the frequency received by the ship is this one okay this much and because this thing happened in few milliseconds okay and after that the ship will be at the forward right so the frequency received by the ship is this one see the difference so this different in this uh, the difference between these two frequency will be calculated and convert into the speed so as you go faster the the more different will be between the, these two receive frequency so this is what they call doppler shift or shift in frequencies uh, changes in frequencies okay so this beam of sound wave around about 3.5 conical okay this one around uh, it's being transmitted when it's being transmitted it's around 3.5 degree it's reflected but, uh, from either side of the seabed okay it can be bottom tracking okay like the initial uh, slide where i show you there's one bottom tracking which means reflected by the seabed or if the depth is more than 300 meter then it will be deflected by the water a layer of water 10 to 20 meters below the keel okay so at that time we will call it a water tracking mode otherwise if it being reflected by the seabed it will be called bottom tracking mode okay so the receiving signal will be of different frequency when the vessel is moving so this different in receiving frequency is called the doppler shift can be converted to speed and or distance okay okay uh, because of the uh, it because the the calculation of the speed depend on the uh, transducer ability or the receiver ability to receive back the signal okay 
so there will be some error uh, because of the trim maybe the ship is rolling so instead of like this maybe the ship is moving like ship was moving it transmit okay and then it's supposed to receive here but because of the trim it receive a little bit late okay uh, so there will be some error on the calculation so what they do they introduce a genus configuration okay so instead of only one one beam now they make it one uh, forward beam aft beam port beam and starboard beam so when the ship is move uh, rolling so all these beam will work together right, and calculate uh, the we try to reduce the possibility of error uh, like this one so this is the error speed error in percent <coughs> if you are not using the genus configuration oh, too much error see? the error shoot up but once the configuration genus configuration transmission is being uh, introduced the error now become less because everybody uh, forward beam stern beam port and starboard beam they work uh, all together to receive the signal and they will calculate the difference in between them okay there's some calculation which is very sophisticated lah. okay something like this lah. okay now first they have a single element uh, and then there's a dual element which is forward and aft uh, and there is also quadruple experiment forward aft port and starboard element so as you have more element you will have lesser and lesser uh, error okay uh, but because it using a sound wave okay temperature different affect the velocity of propagation of sound wave in water okay same like our echo sounder if you remember the echo sounder is using sound wave so that's why it also give it can also affect the uh, speed of the sound wave however temperature error can be eliminated by using temperature probe so the temperature probe will determine Okay, they will uh, detect the temperature. Okay, so at this temperature, let's say 30 degrees Celsius, uh, how much uh, correction need to be applied? Okay, at this temperature, how much correction need to be applied? So temperature probe or temperature uh, meter can tell the uh, equipment to make a correction on how much. Okay, but only for temperature. For salinity and pressure, there is no uh, correction. So the prolog is actually highly accurate. Okay, being still being used, not still being. Is I think will be used for quite some time. Okay, uh, and can be used to measure speed over ground. Particularly useful for birding and maneuvering large ship. Another version of the prolog is based ashore. Blah blah blah. Extreme accuracy. Okay, can measure both ahead and stern and also at the ship. Okay, can measure forward, stern and also port and port and starboard movement. So when the ship is moving like this, sideways, you still can measure forward and port movement of the ship. Okay, accuracy is very accurate because it's only 0.1 knots or 0.2% of distance travel. So if the ship show, uh, if the log show 15 knots, it can be only 15.1 or 14.9. So very accurate. Huh? Okay, the final one is the acoustic correlation log. Okay. Measuring technique which is independent of error from temperature, pressure or salinity of water. So, acoustic law will be will not be uh, affected by temperature, pressure or salinity of water. Okay. Work on the basis of acoustic correlation pressure. So, you will send a signal like this. Okay. So, it's almost, almost, uh, almost like mm, Doppler lock. Almost, huh? But... Okay, but different lah. But the, the explanation is almost like proper. So the translucer has two piezo ceramic element arranged in the shape four and half line. Okay, for bottom tracking up to 200 meter. But after 200 meter, you need to use water tracking because the signal become too weak. Okay, in the transmitting cycle, the pulse is transmitted from both element. Okay, so this both element, the two element will transmit the uh transmit the pulse okay and then but when they receive each element will receive the signal uh 
by no reception they work independently okay uh, but we, we can say that there is only one uh, one pulse is being transmitted but when received both will measure the pulse okay the relation is unique function of the position of the particular element okay uh, something like this huh? um, okay here all right here so this is the ship so they want this is two element here these two element both will transmit a signal okay so by the time this is this signal is being bounced bounce back okay come back maybe the ship already here okay the ship already here this is the element so what happened the aft element will receive the pulse first then only the forward element so we need to say okay we can say here we can say that uh, here it received the pulse first and this is the second so this is the first element the aft element will receive the pulse first and then this forward element will receive the pulse this is the, this is the same pulse huh? uh, like Doppler it receives different frequency but this one this is same frequency okay so this frequency will be compact and the time different will be taken to measure okay since they know what is the distance between these two elements okay they know the distance between these two elements okay so they know what is the time taken okay so they will know what is the speed of the ship okay so the t is the time delay s is the distance between the elements forward and aft element okay the distance s okay and then this uh, element will receive the signal first and after that only it will receive uh, this element will receive the signal so then now what is the difference between this element so v will be the ship speed okay okay so because there is no involvement of velocity of sound in water so no correction for temperature or salinity or pressure in the so the uh, so the uh, advantage of acoustic lock is actually the acoustic is almost the same but you don't have to worry about the uh, temperature salinity and pressure okay uh, that's all the, there is no other uh, unlike Doppler there is some kind of uh, correction right other correction but for acoustic there is uh, you know they don't have to worry about pressure temperature or salinity of the water